Before you enjoy this video, why not consider signing up for an account at PAX? Whether you're a player, agent, club, or scout, PAX is for you. Create your free profile and connect with those in the industry today. For more information, please visit us at www.paxsports.com. That's www.paxsports.com. Now, please go ahead and enjoy our video presentation. All right, guys, welcome to Next Gen Raga, and this is Dream Teams. And in this episode of Dream Teams, we're going to be looking at an all time under 2015. So, if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as bell notification, and you'll be updated as soon as new videos are released. So, let's get into it. First player up, we have at fullback Cheslin Colby from South Africa. Now, a lot of people know Colby as one of the best wings in the world, but at the 2013 Under-20 World Cup, he really did make his mark as a fullback. He had absolutely devastating side steps. He left his opponents dazed and confused. And in my opinion, he made good on his potential. And I really do believe that he is now considered a legend in the making. So he just took place in the one tournament in 2013. South Africa finished in the usual position of third place. So that's the first name on the list, Chesson Colby at fullback. Next up, at right wing, we have Gabriel Iboteye from England. And without a doubt, one of the most devastating wingers I've ever seen unleashed at under 20 level. 13 appearances and 8 tries just shows what an amazing finish he was. I think everyone that saw this guy play would have been convinced a star was born. And you can basically say that he hasn't really fulfilled his potential at senior level, but he's only 22 years of age and time is definitely on his side. So he took play part in two tournaments in 2017 and 2018. And on both occasions, England found themselves in the runner-up position. Next up, we have at center, Romain Intermac from France. And I mean, you can't deny that this guy is just a very special talent. Now, a lot of you guys that are a bit older might remember his father, Emile, who was an absolutely devastating finisher, but Romain has developed his own style of rugby. He has all the weapons, tactical kicking, line breaking, vision, and goal kicking. He led France to their first ever under 20 World Cup win, and he's equally comfortable to fly off, but for this list, we're going to put him in as a center. Two tournaments he took part in, 2017-2018, fourth place finish in 2017, and he obviously won the tournament with France in 2018, their first ever win. Partnering Intermac at center, we have Jan Surfontaine from South Africa. Now, who can ever forget his performances in 2012? He really did make a name for himself on the world stage. He was rewarded by being named RB Young Player of the Year. He played five games, scored four tries in the tournament, and he was a key player in the baby box first and only ever tournament win. He became a senior international, but the last test was played in 2017, and he's such a special talent, so hopefully more is to come. Only the one tournament he took place in, and obviously, as mentioned, South Africa were champions in that tournament. On the left wing, we have our, uh, Julian Savia from New Zealand, and in 2010, he raised Hull at the Under-20 World Cup. I mean, he scored eight tries in only four games, and everyone took notice. He was named RB Junior Player of the Year in the same year, and uh, he wouldn't stop there. He scored tries for fun for the All Blacks. Now, he has lost some speed and some say talent, but no doubt a pros prospect like this will be very hard to find in future tournaments. So he just took part in the one tournament in 2010, and New Zealand won that tournament very comfortably. Then at fly half, and there have been a lot of quality flies, but to me, Andre Pollard has to be top of the list. Um, there, are, there were so many great flowers that we've seen and played this tournament, so choosing only one will be, obviously would have been a tall, uh, tall order. But to me, Pollard has to be there, if not just for his longevity. He was called on as a schoolboy in 2012 and showed maturity beyond his years. He was a key player in the Baby Box first ever Under-20 World Cup win, and he played in three tournaments, guys. That's very rare. And he was named RB Junior Player of the Year in 2014. He became a World Cup winner of the Springboks in 2019. And no doubt he will keep a hold of the number 10 jersey for the foreseeable future. So as mentioned, he took part in three tournaments, 2012, 13 and 14. Uh, first, third and second place finishes respectively. So at Scrum Half, who do we have? Ben Youngs. 
Now, love him or hate him, at junior level, Youngs was a boss. He played two years for the England under-20 team. And for those of you that watched the tournament, I mean, he showed maturity beyond his years. Um, though, now, England were runners-up in both years, but Youngs, in my opinion, really showed his class. He wasn't a one hit wonder, and he managed to make good at senior level. 99 caps for England this far, and over 240 for Leicester. So the two tournaments he took place were in 2009 and 2010, and both times England finished in the run-out position. Now, there should be no guesses for who I've got picked at the eighth man. I've spoken about this guy a lot, Jordan Josephs of France, and to me, not even close. He's the youngest player ever to be crowned RB Junior Player of the Year. Absolutely devastating ball carry and offloader, and he was a key player in France's first ever Under-20 World Cup win. Now, he didn't reach the same heights in 2019, but he did pick up another trophy, and there's no doubt he is a player with a huge future in the game. So the two tournaments that he took part in were 2018 and 2019. Both tournaments France managed to win, and the scary part is that he would still have qualified to take part in this year's tournament had it not been cancelled. At open side flank, we have Sam Kane. And I would say that the 2011 New Zealand under 20 team was one of the best ever, if not the best ever. And he was a key cog in the tournament and very unlucky not to be the RB player of the year that year. He scored three tries in only four games in the tournament and the following year made his all black debut. And so far, he's got over 50 caps for New Zealand and over 100 for the Chiefs, and very recently was named New Zealand captain. So he just took part in the one tournament in 2011, but New Zealand did win that tournament. Like I said, that was one of the, probably the best um, under-20 team to ever take part in a tournament. And partnering him, we have... Luke Whitelock from New Zealand and now he's a member of rugby royalty I mean the Whitelock family just produce crazy talent same as the Barretts and uh, he actually took part in two under 20 World Cup victories for New Zealand and he had the world at his feet he made his test debut for New Zealand in 2013 but since has only made eight senior appearances I mean based on his early promise certainly not fulfilled his full potential but nonetheless has had a respectable career Two tournaments, 2010, 2011, and he picked up a winner's medal in both tournaments. Next up at lock, we have Moro Todje from England. There can be no doubting it. First name on anyone's list for an all-time under-20 team. It was clear from this tournament that he was destined for greatness, and he's gone on to get over 30 caps for England. Uh, British line in 2017, and no doubt in 2021, uh, losing World Cup finalist. Only 25 years of age, and that's very scary. No doubt he's got what it takes to become a future Hall of Famer. He only took part in the one tournament in 2014 and managed to bring home the winner's medal for England. Next up, we have Tupote Toje, Brody Retallick from New Zealand, and yet another member of the 2011 Conquerors. He was a vital player in the tournament and part of a New Zealand golden generation. He would make his debut for New Zealand the following year, and he went on to get over 80 caps for New Zealand. Scary to think he's only 28 years of age. There's still a lot left for this guy to achieve. Took part in one tournament in 2011, first place finish. Like I said, the best team that I've actually seen play at the under-20 tournament, the 2011 Baby Blacks. Then we move on to prop. And we have Demba Bamba from France. And I don't think anyone that watched the 2018 tournament will ever forget his performances. He was a vital member of the team that took home France's first ever trophy. This guy tore apart every pack he faced with absolute ease. And he made his test debut for France the very same year. And I mean, for front ranker, that's almost unheard of. He's 22 years of age at the moment, he's got 10 caps, but definitely a bright future weight. So just that one tournament in 2018 and took home a winner's, uh, winner's medal. Next up, at hooker, we have Asafa Amua. And another one to me, not even close. I know Malcolm Marx is a great player, but in terms, we're only measuring under-20 tournaments specifically, guys. And at the under-20 World Cup, this guy was devastating. He could really become an all-black legend, in my opinion. Um, he was a member of the last Baby Blacks team to win the tournament. He adds a lot of steel to the scrum, loves the physical side of the game, potent ball carrier, and he made his, uh, made his international debut the same year as the tournament win. And i got no doubt he'll become a key player for the All Blacks for many years to come. So he took part in two tournaments, 2016 and 2017, uh, fourth place finish in 2016 and a first place finish in 2017. And our final player at prop, 
Stephen Kitsoff from South Africa. And he was part of the legendary 2012 team, the only South African team to have taken home the trophy. And very unusually, he made his Super Rugby debut actually before he made his Under-20 debut. He became a South African international much later than he deserved in 2016, currently one of the best prop, uh, props on the planet, a World Cup winner in 2019, and at 28 years of age, I think he definitely has one more World Cup left in him at least. So he just played uh, in the one tournament in 2012 and he took home a winner's medal. Absolutely no doubt to me, he definitely deserves his place. He was absolutely potent at that tournament. So guys, what are your thoughts and opinions? Um, I know my Northern Hemisphere brothers, uh, especially the Irish and some Welsh guys are going to be quite upset with some of the players that I've left out probably. But we all here for, uh, di for discussions of rugby and to basically share our opinion. So let me know your opinion in the comment section below. Who do you think I got right? Who do you think I got wrong? Let me know. And as I said before, don't forget to click that subscribe button and bell, bell notification. And you can be updated when new videos come out daily. Have a great week further, gentlemen. Cheers. Bye.